Hey there viewers, welcome back to Ray of All Trades. Today we're going to be working on a new to me uh, 2012 Bad Boy Buggies XTO. Traded a uh, really nice gentleman for this. He needed a gas cart, I needed an electric cart. So now I'm just doing a couple of uh, maintenance items to it. I had to bleed the brakes out. I think it came from an auction. I think it's what that US one's all about. Maybe originally, I don't know. It's got a, it has a roof rack. Um, and it's got the seats and stuff. I'm just going to be recovering those. But the first thing I need to do is the rear brakes on this thing are completely down metal to metal. And the emergency brake doesn't hold anything. Like I said, I've done some stuff to it already. But uh, let's go ahead and get the brakes changed out on it. And this will be one of many videos I hope to do on this uh, little buggy I'm really excited about. So 48 volt version and some four wheel drive came with a winch. Got a jack stand underneath it. I'm not crazy by the amount of play I'm seeing here. Um, I do know that the strut was loose and I tightened that up, but I can see play coming from somewhere. So that play is coming out of that strut. Yeah, I'm not sure if these things are rebuildable or if you have to change the whole thing out. As in close you can see that uh, that metal is basically rubbing on the rotor and it's pretty much like that all the way around so we're gonna pull out these two bolts back here on the back take this uh, pull it basically it takes these pins out that'll free up all this so we can get to these pads to pull them out but I also want to see what's going on with the emergency brake back here because it's not holding either looks like an Allen wrench uh, appears to be a 3 8 Allen wrench. Clean that up before it goes back together, obviously. So, a couple things going on here. Number one, brake pads are completely wore out. We have to compress this piston back in, but before we do that, and I'm actually gonna do it a different way this time. Um, instead of taking the cap off, I'm actually gonna loosen the bleeder to bleed this out. I just finished bleeding these brakes and I've got a good amount of fluid in there. I did it because I had absolutely no brake pedal when I first got it. So let me loosen up the bleeder, compress these, and then see what it takes uh, how this actually works. So this parking brake actually works because as of right now, I've got no parking brake at all when I uh, in, uh, engage that. I'm using a quarter inch deep well socket to try to loosen up the bleeder. That's where the fluid's gonna come out. Okay. All I wanna do now is compress that caliper back and have the fluid come out that way. Try to get a position where we can both see. Okay. 
That's crazy. I couldn't compress it with the pliers. Maybe it was stuck on a lip or something. But I can compress it by hand now. I think it had just got out so far that it was stuck on the outside edge. All right, let's lock that down real quick so we don't lose any more fluid. Still don't know what, what causes this to lock. So I'll tell you what, let's take that part out and see what it does. Maybe we can figure that part out. Well, let me make sure. Yeah, I don't know what this thing's doing, but it's not affecting this brake. So uh, I'm sure that there's something in there that's supposed to move and help push it out or something. Something's supposed to occur, and I don't know what it is. So if I take off this E-clip right here, I should be able to pull this cable free. Somehow doing this is supposed to lock that brake down. And I'm not sure what it's not doing. Other than I can tell you it doesn't make the cart stop. So let's take this part of the caliper off because that appears to be the mechanical portion and find out what it's not doing. Maybe that'll help us fix the other side. Appears to be a 3 16th. It's some sort of a gasket that is just basically falling apart. I expected something mechanical. I did not get that. When I pull this lever down, it pushes in that way. So I'm assuming that the brake fluid is somehow tied into it. So what I think I'm looking at, like I said, when this when this lever moves forward, um, as it comes down, it pushes that piston out. Um, and then there's some dirt and whatnot inside there. But when you look inside the caliper itself, there's the back side of what appears to be a piston in there, and there is a O-ring right here on this lip. And I would guess that since this whole side here is mechanical and the only thing that's occurring is that this is sliding in and out of that uh, o-ring, um, I 
tend to think that this o-ring here is uh, potentially what's failed and allowing fluid to come back because I was also extremely low on brake fluid when I first got it too. Um, that's just why the pedal went to the floor. I'm kind of thinking we might want to clean this up some. It appears to ride most of the time right here. Um, I think we want to clean this up some and see if we can find an o-ring that would replace this. The thing about the Bad Boys buggies, they are fantastic units. They stopped making parts for these things. Well, they stopped, they stopped producing them. So what I'm finding is it's harder and harder to find parts when you need them. So let's get this o-ring out of here and hope I can find a one just like it. Let's see. Oh yeah, that slips that slips really easy on there. Let me dig through my stash here and see what I can come up with. And I can tell you that uh, the fluid just moves into this section all the time because I keep dumping uh, brake fluid out of there. So it's not as pliable as it should be and it's slipping on that. So let's get this cleaned up and uh, let me grab the kit. I'll be right back with you guys. I think I'm going to have to... I went through every one of my O-rings and I cannot find anything that fits. So... Um, Using the micrometer, it looks like I'm at uh, 0.106 inches on the uh, thickness. I am 0.3125 on the inner diameter. Let's just verify it against this. 0.309. So it needs to be able to come up on a uh, 0 0.300 most likely. And then my outer diameter is right at a half inch, 0.49995 or 295. Anyway, and it feels uh, like it might be right there. Anyway, uh, I'm, so I'm going to put this back together to keep the contaminants out of this thing and not plan on uh, using that portion for right now but we know how to fix it I'm gonna go find those o-rings something that's uh, not gonna break down with brake fluid mm. All right. and I'm gonna look for or try to make one of these gaskets if I can't find it. I'm gonna leave this gasket off for now. I'm coming right back into that thing as soon as I get the O-rings. Until I get those O-rings, I'm going to have to keep a really close eye on uh, the brake fluid level. Before I get too far, let me get this back together. That goes on first. that and then put the e-clip on. Let's get the uh, pins cleaned up on the uh, wire wheel. Get some grease on them and get them back in there. Let's get our brake lubricant caliper grease. Spread around. Take our pads. I'm going to load the caliper. Basically, I'm going to have one on this side and one on this side. And then the rotor is going to fit between those two pads. 
and the whole assembly should go on just like that. Get the clean and lubed caliper pins to hold it in place. Alright, it took a little bit of coaxing, but I finally got the two bolts all the way in or you know pushed in now I need to uh, tighten them down So yeah, new pads on this side. Obviously I'm not done because I have to uh, get this o-ring taken care of. Let's go ahead and swap out the pads on the other side. Again, same problem. These pads are just... Nothing left of those brake pads at all. Let's see if we can get this, this side compressed back in. Oh, this side compresses in with no problem. I think that other side was just stuck out too far and it got hung up on the lip. Brake pads sit on there kind of like that. The caliper on top squeezes them, and then when the brake pressure, brake fluid pressure is let off, it releases them. Um, basically, they're not squeezing anymore. So, let's get these looped up. The reason you're lubing these is because the brake pads actually move on these pins and so does the brake caliper. It uh, slides back and forth. And that one's tight. That one's tight. The wheel still turns. Make that move. So something I do notice is this side of this caliper is broken off of this. So that's no longer attached. That's probably the biggest part of my problem. See this cable right here is supposed to be on this bracket down here. And there's a chunk missing. So this is no longer attached. I'm very likely going to uh, either make a bracket to pass this back on there or see if I can order replacement calipers. So this strut doesn't bounce around like the other side does. So a little discovery. Um, after I put everything back together, I tried the emergency brake with that, uh, what I thought was a worn out O-ring and it worked just fine. So I'm guessing that just cleaning up that O-ring and getting everything set back in place probably was the biggest culprit. I did make myself a new gasket because that other one would not uh, seal or seat properly, which is odd because I've only got one emergency brake as you guys saw earlier. The other side's broken. So we're going to try to just put this seal in here 
I'm just, I want to keep the uh, dirt out of it if I can help it. And while everything's fresh, might as well go ahead and get this done. I did a quick uh, internet search and I was not finding any parts at all for this rear caliper. So it's going to be something that I have to fabricate. There was not one back over here, right? Bear with me. Okay. Let's see if my gasket lines up. Yeah, that looks like it'll fit. And like I said, I think that this gasket, its only purpose is to uh, keep dirt and debris out of here. Okay, that's all tight. Let me pull up the brake real quick. Let's see. Oh yeah. Well, I can't move it from down here anyhow. The other wheel's still moving. Obviously this one's still moving because uh, that's supposed to be down here and it didn't work too well. Let's see what we can come up with for that. Let me think about this. All right, well, I went through several different things to try. I thought about a, uh, cutting a bracket and then making like a hook to fasten it on the back side. Um, I right now I've got it tie wrapped so that it's holding it in place here, and then I've got that uh, e-clip back on just as a placeholder. I thought about a hose clamp. Uh, I don't think that'd be strong enough. I thought about a uh, one of these. Um, larger, um, I'm drawing a blank on this. I did find a, this is some sort of a uh, pipe clamp. So you would shove a bolt and nut through here and um, tighten up and things like that. But it's about the right size. I think what I'm going to do is uh, fasten it like that, right? So that it's got that space there. That'll help hold that in line. And I just need to find out what that distance is and bend it here so that it comes up the back side of this uh, bracket. And I think that will hold it in place. That'll give me a little bit of space on this side that I can tighten it up to shift back and forth if I need to. But uh, I need to be fairly close the first time. And then of course I'm going to have to drill through this bracket to bolt this to it. Um, again, I, I am having a hard time finding these parts. That's the only reason I'm fabricating all this stuff. Uh, I do want something substantial. That's a pretty thick piece of metal. Let me put this together, see what I can come up with. And I'm hoping that I don't have to uh, edit this whole part of the video out. I'm hoping it's usable. That's what I'm up against right now. I'll work on this. I'll bring you guys back here in a little bit. Okay, so here's what I came up with. I took that bracket we were talking about. I had to bend it on a on an angle. Basically, I just drew a line and bent it right there. It's at a funny angle. It took me a couple tries, which is why it has all these extra marks on it. Um, slide that down here and put that up into place. And what I plan on doing is anchoring that bracket right behind just like that and I'm going to drill a hole through this side and then put a nut and a bolt on this and that should hold that in place because um, it's pulling into that groove uh, it's just marking brake because honestly the machine stops as soon as you let off the gas anyway it basically stops itself 
So let me get this hole drilled, try to get this together, and let's see if it works. Okay, here's the bracket. Um, I would have done a couple things differently. Um, so this, this uh, bolt right here probably needs a washer on it just to get a little bit more grip to it. It is holding pretty good. This bolt right here, uh, because of that right there, that um, spot on this aluminum casting was going to stop me from hitting that bolt just right. It would have been down inside there, which is, I think is, this is a strengthening member. So I drilled it at an angle. Uh, could have probably used a longer bracket to make it come up here. Um, but this is what I had. So if this works, I'm probably going to redo this in the future. Uh, just trying to see if I can make what I have on hand work. Let's uh, pull the brake on and see if this thing lasts more than one pull. I pulled it down and the wheel's not turning. turn and that piece hasn't tried to jump out of its bracket um, I do see this arm tries to hit that bolt head though just by luck I put it at the right angle to make it come down so, anyway I guess it works I think we'll call that good for the brake video it's got a really good brake pedal emergency brake works like it's supposed to it might even be a little bit on the tight side you can adjust that cable by loosening and tightening this handle. But yeah, had a really good brake pedal. It used to go all the way to the floor. When the brake is on, she doesn't move. When the brake's off, she does. I'm going to call that it for uh, Bad Boy Buggy XTO brake job. Rear brake job, anyway. Got plenty more videos coming up. I'm going to be redoing the seats on this thing. Front seats, back seats. You can see that the platform is missing right now. Now we're doing those. We're going to be putting some uh, ground effects lights on it to change colors uh, for when this thing is out camping. We're going to be putting some work lights up on the top. So LED lights up on the top so that it doesn't draw a whole lot of power. It gives us a lot of illumination. So when this thing's actually doing some, doing some work. Hope you guys got something out of the video. Appreciate it. Appreciate you hanging out with me. If you like the video, smash that thumbs up button for me. Helps the channel tremendously. Doesn't cost you guys a thing. Catch you on the next one.